Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here, PGA member, founder of Segudo Golf. And in this episode, I'm talking about something that makes me so sick. I'm tired of seeing this death move that a ton of amateurs make, and it all involves your wrists. Now, I tell you, you gotta be friends with the golf ball in the golf swing, but I never said be friends with the golf club. Don't get too friendly with the golf club. Here's why. I see this all the time. I call it hugging the club syndrome. Can I have a hug? I just love my golf club. I love my club so much. I just want to hug it and hold it and, and just walk around with it and take it for a stroll. It's ruining your game. And every amateur, I see so many amateurs do this. It's ridiculous. Why do you hug your golf club? You see it in your swing, you say, I can't get rid of this ugly move at the top of my swing. Well, yeah, you're hugging it like this and everything's really close and short and sweet and then you do this on the downswing. And you wonder why you've got old man senior yardage. And you wonder why you can't hit it past your buddies because you're not hitting the ball with any authority because you're hugging the golf club and you're too friendly with it. And this problem, we're gonna end it right now. It makes me sick. Subscribe to this channel if you want the best ball striking of your life because I'm gonna help you get there in a body friendly and simplified manner. Let's get rid of the hugging the club syndrome. Hugging the club syndrome is a disease that afflicts approximately 76.35% of all golfers across the world and it's all due to a faulty understanding about what the wrists are doing in the swing. If you want to understand the role of the wrists in the swing, this is what I like to tell people. Wristy business is risky business. Meaning if you're focusing on getting the wrists to move, you're going to ruin your swing. It's too risky, why are we going there? A lot of you are taught based on the whole idea of you know, perhaps an early hinge, you're making sure you get enough wrist cock or whatever you want to call it, wrist hinge, get enough hinge because it's a power source. And yes, the wrists are a power source right here. We gotta hinge the wrist, you hinge the wrist, the club moves three more feet and the club moving farther back gives you more power potential. But here's the problem with your wrist hinge. If you hinge it consciously with the hands and the wrist here, you could move the club up here, 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 here. Your wrist could hinge 15 million different ways. And you know what that means? 15 million types of golf shots. Oh, inconsistent. And you don't have any power because you're hinging it up and then you're chopping down like this. There's really one good way to hinge the wrists, not those 15 million other ways. And the best way to do it is to not hinge the wrists at all. Hugging the club syndrome is due to people that do this. They hinge the club up straight in front of them. They say, okay, I'm gonna start the back swing like this and I'll just hinge the club up and do this. The, the hands get high above the body, the arms get high above the shoulder, your shoulders don't turn, so it's a very armsy swing and then you chop down on top of it. It's ruining your game. What we need to do instead is forget about the wrists altogether and keep the hands quiet like they're in a library. Shh, we don't want to disturb anybody reading the book in the library. If you keep the hands quiet and you've got a good grip, I'll keep taking the club back and because of gravity and the weight of the club head, the club hinges but it's not on my own doing consciously. I'm not thinking hinge, hinge, hinge. I'm thinking turn, turn, turn. Keep on turning, keep on turning. And that will get you plenty of hinge. It's when you start hinging on your own that the problems happen. I tell people to get the lift out of their swing and most people can't get any lift out of their swing because they hinge it up like this. They're hinging their arms and their wrists and everything up. They think that's hinge. That's not hinge. Hinge is this. The wrists will just hinge up and down in the swing. That's the only function they have. If anything else is a lie and it doesn't work. With that in mind, here's how we're gonna get rid of your problem. If you wanna see more power, more control, you gotta get the wrists out of play. So get them out. Put some Novocaine in your wrists and numb them. Next thing we're gonna do is get all stiff wristed about this. Stiff neck, stiff wristed, you get stiff. Nothing going on here. If there's something going on there, you've already started ruining your swing. Here we go, keep the hands really quiet going back. You should keep the club from hinging as long as possible to about here. A really quiet takeaway. I see tons of problems in the first part of the swing like this. Wrist hinging up right off the ball. What are you doing that for? You're moving the club in 15 different directions. 15 different results. I move the club in one direction, I get one result every single time. Clean, crispy KFC. You want that, don't you? If you don't want that, don't watch this channel. We've talked about hugging the club syndrome and why you should never ever do that again and how risky business is risky business. So we just gotta get rid of the wrist.
keep them quiet. They're gonna hinge on their own. The wrists only hinge up and down. So we're not thinking about this. You got a good grip. It should all work out on its own. Take the club back stiff wristed to here and through to here. We're just gonna take it back, turn our chest to the right and to the left, keep everything really quiet. Feel quiet hands, nothing's going anywhere in the first part of the swing. And just feel everything staying quiet and stiff wristed. Once you've done that 30 or 40 times until it feels comfortable, we can move into the full swing. And what I want us to do here is have the same focus. When you're used to hugging the club like this and lifting it, you need to feel the opposite, which is away from you and no wrist hinge. They're gonna hinge, trust me. You're just not gonna feel it because you're used to doing all this breaking down. We're gonna keep the club going around our body, turning around instead of going up and down. So the big focus here when you get to the full swing is to make sure that as you take the club back, you continue turning the top instead of lifting. We've got our arms straight. We're keeping the stiff wristed feeling. Keep turning your body, turn, turn, turn. By turn, I mean turning your torso, turn it. Turn your torso down to the ground. And as you do this, the club will naturally hinge. It has to. Let gravity do the work. Keeping a really straight arm feeling. Here's what I want you to feel like. So I'm gonna hit a shot like you should feel. This is what it should feel like. It's not gonna look like this, but I want it to feel like this. Because if you're used to hugging the club, remember feel versus real, you're used to feeling this, then this is gonna feel like this. It almost feels like you're not doing anything in the backswing. You're throwing away so much power by hugging that golf club, it's amazing. Then, once you get more comfortable with that, you can start to forget about it, but you gotta check video and make sure that you are getting to here. The biggest thing to get rid of hugging the club syndrome is to continue going around, making sure you're going this way, this way, not this way, not this way, but this way this way around 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 beats the hugging out of your golf swing stop hugging the club for a living you've been doing that for so long your club has such a good relationship with you but i don't want that you don't want that because it's ruining your golf game so get in here straight arms feel stiff wristed and just send it You gotta send it to win it. So Segudo golfers, quit hugging the club. I know you wanna have a good relationship, but for crying out loud, I can't wait till the day till I stop seeing the same old hugging the club problems. It really goes back to you thinking you need wrist hinge when you don't. You don't need it the way you think you need it. Give me a hug. You're trying to do too much of a good thing. You think wrist hinge in itself is good, but you're trying to do it at different parts of the swing, it's not working because you should never try to do it. It should just happen. If it doesn't happen naturally, then you're contriving it. And when you're contriving something, that means it's different every time, which means you're inconsistent. You see where I'm going with that equation? Which means you're never gonna have fun. I want you to have fun. So in order to have fun, we're not contriving. It's a natural wrist hinge. Take the club around your body. Stop hugging the club, I know. You love your clubs, but stop hugging them in the swing. In the swing, you guys are bitter enemies. Keep it away from you, keep that club away from you. Oh my goodness, it's got some stuff on it, keep it away. Get it away. Ew, get it away. It's like the thing you don't, you don't wanna to touch it. The club is lava, don't touch it. So Good Dog Offers, thanks again for tuning in. If you want a simplified system to play your best golf now, check out my website, sogudo.golf. It shows you in short, three to five minute videos, exactly how to take your swing from foundation to finish, and some other awesome videos in there. It's going to be an entire game improvement program. I've got chipping and pitching in there, and also adding in putting and bunker play, which are coming soon. So, stay tuned. 10 bucks a month for the price of a Starbucks coffee. You could be playing your best golf right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the range.